By all the gods of gaming, please don't suck. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Very Right or Very Wrong, where we take a look at usually re new release trailers or just other media surrounding a certain project, and we determine whether it's going to go very right or very wrong. Today, I, I was kind of thinking about the direction I want to take this show, because this is actually this show is actually doing pretty well, and it's offset, and I was thinking, you know, why do I have to limit it to just movies and TV? I mean, I realize... I'm a big gamer. I play video games all the time. I own an Xbox One, a PS4, and my, my roommate owns a Switch that I borrow from time to time. Why not can't we talk about video games? And more importantly, why can't we talk about a video game that I actually know a lot about? Because I've watched all the trailers. I actually played it when I was at Comic-Con, and I'm a huge fan of the source material. So on that note, let's talk about Marvel's Spider-Man PS4. Now, before I get too far into this, I should point out my history with the Spider-Man games, because I think that's kind of relevant to where I stand on some of the pros and cons I'm going to discuss. Uh, I should point out that I've pretty much, I've pretty much played every Spider-Man game that's come out on consoles since the old uh, Spider-Man PS1 game, which is my first like Spider-Man game I ever played. Uh, still one of my favorites, honestly. I, I grew up with that shit. That, that, was, that was my game. That was like the thing I clung to for dear life, and I played it a million times. And since then, I've pretty much played almost every major Spider-Man console release, and a few handhelds, not as many of the handhelds as in the consoles. So I play like Spider-Man, Spider-Man Enter Electro, uh, the movie adaptation Spider-Man for like the Tobey Maguire movie, Spider-Man 2, which of course is the well-known classic, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, which I think is, 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 gets an unfair rep, uh, or maybe not unfair rep, just underrated compared to Spider-Man 2. I also play Shattered Dimension, so I don't think it's a little underrated. That was a fun, simple kind of combat thing that had a unique premise. I didn't play the one that was like the time split between Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. I didn't really get to that one. I heard it wasn't very good, so I just I decided to skip it. I I played the main Spider-Man movie adaptation, which was okay. I, mean, I like the fact they used lesser known villains, which is another topic I'll get to in a little while, and I skipped Amazing Spider-Man 2 because I heard that game was just fucking garbage. I also played Web of Shadows, which is another kind of unrated Spider-Man game, although that one definitely had its flaws, uh, and then I, I didn't play Spider-Man Friend or Foe because who nobody gave a shit about that game before it came out, and nobody gave a shit about it after it came out. So for, if you've been under a rock for like the past year or so, Spider-Man PS4 is the newest Spider-Man game that's being made by Insomniac, uh, which is who made people made the Ratchet and Clank games and other stuff. I'm mostly in for the Ratchet and Clank games because I'm a huge fan of those series. But this is the first foray into superheroes, like copyright superheroes that they're going into. So it's a really big deal, and they they're definitely taking a lot of care and concern to try to get Spider-Man right. It's also been getting a lot of stupid attention right now on Twitter from people who are mad that their particular suits didn't get in the game for whatever reason. It's really dumb. It's really dumb. And right off the bat, because right off the bat, we're not talking about it. It's stupid. It's nonsensical. And it's not going to the pros or cons. It's fucking dumb. We're not talking about it. But we are going to talk about just general thoughts of, like, basically the overall impression I've gotten based on everything I've seen, everything I've played. And I'm going to tell you right now, I do think this game can go very right, but... I do have concerns. So we're gonna go into it. Let's start off with things I like about this game. Let's talk about pros. Okay, right off the bat, we need to talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is, of course, one of the most important things this game really needs to get right to be a standout Spider-Man game and kind of what the series needs after the disaster that was... I don't want to say Edge of Time was a disaster, but it wasn't up to par, and especially a disaster that was this made Spider-Man 2. That game sucked from what I heard. So this, ga this game has a lot riding on just getting the mechanics right. So... The web swinging has to be perfect. The combat has to be good. Uh, the, all the other stuff, they have to, as only new that we haven't seen the Spider-Man game before. So that, and so far from what I can tell, this one looks like they're doing that pretty well. I've because I got a chance to try out the web swing myself when I was at Comic Con, and the web swing feels really good. Now there isn't a boost button on there, which for me took a while to get used to because I'm so used to other Spider-Man free roaming web swinging games having some kind of boost button. This one, so this one is a case of it takes a lot of skill to. It's easy to pick up, but hard to master, which I appreciate for something like this, because I don't think we've gotten that in a Spider-Man game in a really long time. So that's going to be fun, I think. I, so from what I've played, it plays really well, really smooth. It's a lot of fun to web, 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 swing, web swing through the city. That's fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, combat feels pretty fluid. It looks like they're definitely taking inspiration from Arkham, but it's not quite as ripping it off as much as the Amazing Spider-Man game was. That one felt like it was ripping, ripping it off much more than this game was. This definitely feels like Arkham not, like Arkham Asylum meets Ratchet and Clank. That's kind of what it feels like. And for the most part, it works. You feel like Spider-Man. Those mechanics work well. 
Uh, the stealth mechanics in this game work very much in the same way that it did in Shadow Dimensions and in the main Spider-Man game. More of the main Spider-Man game than Shadow Dimensions, to be, to be fair. You could basically sneak up on anyone and instant strike them down if you're stealthy enough. And it's, it's pretty easy to get an angle on characters and, and enemies and stuff like that while you're kind of... Because you can zip along from wall to wall. You can do all the Spider-Man stuff. So unlike Batman, where you have to find the nearest gargoyle to hang off of, Spider-Man can fucking stick to anything. So it makes sneaking up on enemies pretty easy. But even if it, even if you get caught for s somehow, or if you get in a combat situation, the combat itself is very fluid. It works very well. It's very easy to change into different uh, gadgets and equipment. It takes a little bit, there's a bit of a learning curve in terms of figuring out how the gameplay works and how the mechanics work and figuring out how the whip, whip series do what. But overall, it, again, it goes in the same category as West Wing. Uh, easy to pick up, probably hard to master, which makes me very curious there they're gonna pull it off. I'm optimistic as far as the combat goes. I think it's gonna be good. And that's, that's good because combat is notoriously a thing that Spider-Man games have had a hard time getting down because it's hard not to make it repetitive it's hard not to make it a button masher this one's trying to it's trying familiar tactics but with a newer twist so again that gives me hope that they're gonna get it right i i do have faith in insomniac because i do think despite my trepidations about some of their writing in past games i think their gameplay has always been really really solid so i'm i'm optimistic and i yeah i think it's gonna be good so next pro peter parker how the hell are you? The animation and character designs, what do I even need to say about this? The, the graphics look fantastic, the city is so much, it looks gorgeous, so much fun to swing around in. The villain designs, the suit designs, all look great. They're unique, they very clearly give you the style of this universe, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit. It has a very clear identity from other Spider-Man games, and, and it separates itself out from other Spider-Man universes. And that is something that Insomniac really need to do on the onset, and they pull it off. It looks great. Next pro. Wilson Fisk may have had his detractors, but at least he helped keep some order. The lore. This one definitely takes advantage of the fact that Insomniac has basically given free reign over the Spider-Man lore, and they're definitely doing some interesting things with it. And I'm very, it makes me very curious to see where it's going. And I like the fact that because it's clearly doing its own thing, it, it you know kind of similar beats it might hit, but you not it does leave a certain element of unpredictability. It's kind of what made the Ultimate Universe interesting. It's more like it's familiar but different, but different enough to give it a new twist on it. And I, I appreciate games I can do that. Like, that's one reason I love the Telltale Batman games is that they play with the lore in just the right way to give it a fresh spin. And I'm hoping this, and from what I've seen, I think this game's gonna do it too. And that leaves me excited. Like, for example, just having Harry Osborn, uh, not Harry Osborn, uh, Norman Osborn, uh, running for mayor. He is mayor in this universe, but he's kind of like a Nixon mayor in that he's kind of, he's like successfully abolished like term limits for being mayor. But he's, he's also not just the dark, cold businessman like we've seen. This one, he's more like the sleazy salesman. And that's kind of an interesting twist in the character. I don't know if he's gonna be Green Goblin in this or not. He's definitely gonna be a villain, but we don't, I don't know if he's gonna be Green Goblin or not. There's kind of some kind of trepidation whether or not it's going to be Green Goblin or Dr. Octopus as the main villain. They're keeping it pretty tight under wraps. I'm sure we'll find out pretty quickly after the game comes out, but we'll see. I'm intrigued. The point is, I'm intrigued. There is definitely a few surprises the game has in store, and I think it's going to be great fun to go in there. I also like the incl inclusion of Miles Morales. I like seeing him in the game. Uh, I like references to characters like Tombstone, and I like the Mr. Negative who has been in video games so far, is in this as well. That's another thing I'll talk about probably in a little bit in relation to the villains. But from what I can tell so far, what they're doing with the lore, and even just the simple stuff, like there, I think I read something the other day how there's some citizens in the game that are dressed up like Spider-Man who are in, like kind of the dark, they got dark knighted in that they're inspired by Spider-Man, so they dress up like Spider-Man, they also try to fight crime to make the, the neighborhood better. Uh, small touches like that, I don't know, I doubt that's going to play a big part in the game, but I like that that touch is in there and showing that they took, like, one of the, probably one of the first things they did is they tried to figure out how can we make this world Spider-Man, but still Insomniac? Like, how can we make this our own? What can we, what should we keep in there? What should we do differently? It, it's, there's a lot of playing around and I like that they were given the freedom to do that. That means that you might... That, that means that's going to be hard to figure out what's going to happen to the end, outside of the obvious. Spider-Man's going to save the day. So that, that leaves me very excited. Next pro. The inclusion of Peter Parker. Okay, this is something I've, this is one nitpick I've had with uh, the Arkham series. And the one thing I actually really liked in comparison to Batman and the Telltale series is the fact that unlike Ar the Arkham games, uh, Telltale Batman actually did a really good job of emphasizing the importance of both Bruce Wayne and Batman. 
They're both very important to the character, so therefore they both have to be included in the game to some context. The Arkham series is only ever interested really in Batman. Bruce Wayne shows up like once, and that's it. You never see really Bruce Wayne again in, like after he turns into Batman in, what was it, Arkham City? Yeah, Arkham City. So I'm looking forward to the fact this movie definitely says like, yes, Peter Parker is important. We are gonna have uh, missions where you play as him, or at the very least gonna play a very prominent role in the, in the actual game. That stuff is cool to see. I don't know how the gameplay portions of Peter Parker, or even Mary Jane, because I guess she's playable too. That's something I'll also talk about in a little bit. Uh, I don't know how well those gameplays can actually work. I don't know if they're gonna be actual fun. Maybe there's gonna be a chore to deal with, but either way, the fact that they're there shows that Insomniac deeply care about getting this character right, and that gives me hope that they're not gonna fuck this up. So I like that, and yeah, that's in that one. Okay, last one, this one's short. The Sinister Six, it's cool to see them. Yeah, I don't think we actually ever had the Sinister Six together in a Spider-Man vi video game before, at least. I don't know if they're gonna, I don't know if you're gonna fight them all at the same time or how that's gonna work, but the fact that they made a very clear effort to say like, yeah, the Sinister Six is in here, that's pretty fucking cool. And again, all the co the characters look great doing it, and uh, this animation for the cutscenes is fucking fantastic. It looks great. All right, I think it's all the pros I got. Let's talk about some cons, uh, some concerns. Now, they're not enough to outweigh the positive, but they are things that I think are still worth talking about, so let's get into it. First major con, and this is where I have to be kind of the bad guy for a bit, and I always feel bad that I have to be the bad guy in these things, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I think it's worth talking about. I'm not entirely sold on the voice actor behind Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. He just, it sounds too, I don't want to say young, but it just seems to lack the maturity I feel like the character should have at this point of this universe's Spider-Man career. Because like I think they said, like the devs clarified, this Spider-Man's like in his mid-20s, he's a scientist, and he's like, he's definitely moved on from the high school phase, but the, the voice actor still kind of sounds like he's kind of in the high school phase, and it just doesn't really work for me. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. I don't think it's gonna be bad. I just don't think it it's what it could be. And again, this isn't necessarily a problem that's new for Spider-Man games. A lot of Spider-Man games have had the same problem before, where they, they tend to try to make Spider-Man sound too young rather than what's kind of age appropriate like Ultra Spider-Man did that although you can kind of argue that was deliberate because he's technically supposed to be high school so you can get away with it in that game but like Web of Shadows that was a case where like I I don't know why he sounded as high pitched and squeaky as he did but he really did and uh, that was really distracting because this is I was a Spider-Man supposed to be like in his gotta be like mid to late 20s way too old to sound like that uh, and I think it made Spider-Man 2 did that kind of too even like I'd argue the main Spider-Man did that one too. Or did they, for some reason, they just keep these like characters like one super young. And oddly enough, and, like unless they get a voice actor that's played the character before, like in Shattered Dimensions, and I think in uh, Edge of Time, like Edge of Time, they brought back a few of the original veteran Spider-Man actors. They tend, they just tend to just cast these kind of whiny voices and I don't really know why do they think Spider-Man just naturally sounds whiny because I don't think he should. No, MCU Spider-Man notwithstanding, I'm actually okay with that because that fits the character that story is telling but this one wants to tell a story of an older Peter Parker. I feel like Spider-Man should sound older. Now again this is something that could only bother me and I acknowledge that. This is one of those weird things that could only bother me uh, and it's probably a case where I'm totally wrong and it's gonna be fine but if, from, what I, from what I heard in the gameplay I played and when I've seen the trailers, I'm not sold on it. And even like getting past the a like the age sound part of it, I'm also not sure that the voice actor's really up for the challenge of playing like saying these lines. Like he's saying the Spider-Man lines, I'm just not really feeling them. And again, maybe that will change when the actual game comes out, but from what I've heard, it's like, I don't know, it's just not really working for me. Again, it's not awful. It's not even bad. It's like not even like meh, it just it doesn't really work for me personally, so that's that's more of a me thing. I acknowledge that. That's why I'm getting this one over first. All right, con number two. We keep getting told that there are a lot of like story missions with Peter Parker or Mary Jane, and we haven't really seen much, if anything, from them, and that makes me a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. It does kind of seem like maybe Insomniac doesn't have a whole lot of faith that these kind of gameplay snippets will pay off. Maybe they kind of know where people are gonna hate them. It, it's more like one of those cases where if they don't tell you about a feature that's gonna be in there, like a fairly prominent feature, 
It's not a reason to sound all the alarm bells, but it's one of those things that kind of makes you wonder why they haven't. So that's a minor one again. That one's probably not going to be that big of a deal when the game comes out, but I think it's worth noting. All right, third con, I'm a little worried about the actual story of the game. Now, we don't honestly know a whole lot about the story in the current Spider-Man game, other than it takes place after Spider- it takes place as Spider-Man's taking down the Kingpin, and, like, that creates a void where other criminals come in. That's really about it. That's And at some point, Sinister Six show up. That's really the extent of what we know of the game's story up to this point, which, again, isn't a bad thing, and I don't- and my concern is more, like, and this comes down to what I know with Insomniac in general, because I've been following them since the Spyro days. I'm a long-time fan of Insomniac games. I think they make excellent games. I think their game, their strongest suit has always been their gameplay, and that's always what's been consistently fun about every game. Uh, my problem is, is writing. It's never usually been their forte. I might get a lot of backlash. I might get a lot of backlash from people. I know he's really angrily typing in the comments, but I... and. You're gonna get angrier when I say what I'm gonna say next. I would say that as much as I love the main, like the main stay Ratchet and Clank games, one that kind of follow the formula, I would say the only, like, only two of them really have an actual, like, good story, and that'd be like a crack in time and like maybe Tools of Destruction. But other than that, they're all you're there more for the gameplay than the story. The story is just kind of meh to me, and to me. Personally, like I, even that Ratchet and Clank, I don't think it's ever been really known for their stories. So I don't think this is really new to anyone necessarily. But yeah, so going into those games and going to this game that does look at its point a heavy emphasis on story as well as gameplay, I am a little concerned based on Insomniac's previous projects and the reputation. Now, granted, I haven't played all Insomniac games, so maybe there are a few out there that I miss that have like amazing stories, but I haven't heard of them. So that leaves me concerned that like I don't know if they have the writing talent to figure this out, to, 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 to do this. But again, that's purely speculative. We don't know enough about the story for me to make a solid case one way or another than that. So that's a case where we're just gonna have to wait till next week till the game comes out, and we'll see what happens. But that, for me, going into the game, that's a concern I have. Okay, and the last con, and this is kind of a bit, this is the biggest one, I always try to save the biggest one for last, is I am, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed by their choice in villains for this, honestly, and I, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, but I just feel like, you know, you have an, you have the chance to start fresh with a Spider-Man game, like the first one we've had in a long while, and I'm just kind of thinking like, you know, maybe you can kind of expand your villain roster a bit, because I feel like, especially with the, the the villains we've seen so far in this game, I feel like we're kind of using like the same three or four over and over again, and that, to me, that's kind of disappointing. Now, granted, I love the way these characters look, but man, I am so tired of fighting the Rhino every fucking Spider-Man game we play. I don't know why it feels like in every Spider-Man game, we have to fight the fucking Rhino. As soon as I see my character, I know exactly how that boss battle is gonna go. He's gonna, uh, he's gonna have, I'm gonna have to dodge his attacks for a little bit. He's gonna charge into something. Then when he's charged, he's gonna ram into a wall or something. Then I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna punch the shit out of him. Then re rinse, lather, repeat. Now maybe Insomniac's gonna do something very different with this Rhino boss battle, and I would love it if they did. But from just from history, because. God, how many games has he been in? Because he was in the Spider-Man PS1 game, he was in Sp the Spider-Man 2, he was in Ultimate Spider-Man, he was in Amazing Spider-Man. I don't think he was in Shattered Dimensions. That's actually the one thing he's really, I don't think he was actually in that. And I I'm at the point where like, oh man, I am so fucking sick of it. Do something, like pick a different character. And I don't feel it about all the villains on this roster. Like, I like that Mr. Negative's in here because he's never been in a game. It's like, okay, cool. A new character with a unique set of powers, that'll be fun to see. Uh, but like Electro, we've seen a bunch of times before. Uh, Vulture, we've seen a bunch of times before. Like I'm just saying, like I'm, I know, like to a certain extent, all the big names have been used in Spider-Man games one way or another, and that uh, like this repeat's gonna happen. But for for the first major game like this that's drawn up this much excitement in a long time, just just go out there, pick out some like oddball characters. Like I would love to see a game that had like the spot as a villain like that wouldn't that be fucking cool like you could do some really cool boss fight stuff with a character like that or Sandman we don't get Sandman in nearly enough Spider-Man games I think he's been in like what two or three uh, which would be like Shattered Dimensions and 
Spider-Man Enter, Enter Electro. Those are the only two I can think of where uh, Sandman has been a prominent villain in there. Or like the Beetle would be a cool one, or Hydro Man. We've never gotten Hydro Man, at least not in a console game. Pick characters where you can do more creative stuff with them, and maybe they're saving that for the sequel. But for now, like if you're just going for like straight up beat 'em up villains, I just I don't know. I kind of wish they they kind of stretched out a bit. I think it would have been cool if they picked some villains we just don't see very often. I, and granted, again, I have to take that with a bit of grain of salt because again, most of the big Spider-Man villains have been done at some point or another in a Spider-Man game because there's so many Spider-Man games out there. That being said, I just I think it'd be cool to stretch your range a bit. Maybe pixel line obscure, pixel line newer, like they did Mr. Negative. Uh, like how cool would it be to see Morlin in a Spider-Man game? Now granted, I don't know how you can do that without making him the main villain, but my god, can you imagine a like a Spider-Man game where Morlin was the main villain? That that would like cause like a serious feeling of dread as in there's like nothing you can do to stop him. I, and I give, uh, I give Amazing Spider-Man a fair amount of crap, but at the same time, I do admire the fact that they actually, they kind of did that. They picked more obscure characters, like, they went with, Al like, Alistair Smythe was the main villain in that one, and Spider Slayers, that was cool. Uh, and that one also had, like, Vermin and, like, really obscure characters like that, stuff like that was cool to see. Uh, and this, but this one is kind of going, like, okay, Electro and Vulture and Rhino, okay, it's, well, Scorpion don't see that often, but he's been in, he's been in a fair share, too. Uh, Green Goblin is surprisingly in not as many video games as you think he would be, quite frankly. You'd think he'd be in a bunch of them, but he's really not. So, like, I would love to see him pop up in this game. Maybe Norman Osborn will be Green Goblin in this one. Or even, like, Hobgoblin, or Jack-O-Lantern, or Hammerhead. I think Hammerhead was, like, in one game. Or, like, get, like, Tombstone, or Calypso, or, like, you, there's so many, so many great Spider-Man villains to choose from that I just feel... I feel like it's kind of a shame to pigeonhole yourself in there. And Shocker, do we really need Shocker in another video game? Shocker always feels like that. And then again, I guess it makes sense why they always throw them in there. He is basically like the seedless filler boss, for lack of a better term. Shocker gets such shit treatment. I don't know, like again, it's something that probably only bothers me, but I would really like to see them expand out more. Like that's what I'll give uh, the last studio that was making Spider-Man games. Start with a B, I'm forgetting their name. But they did kind of branch out a bit. Mysterio, like any chance to throw Mysterio in a Spider-Man game, I am so down for. Get Mysterio in more games. Mysterio is always so much fun as a villain. The, I will give, like, I think it was like Beatniks or whatever the, the studio call, or Beatrox. Anyway, uh, the point is they did kind of pick out more outside the box Spider-Man villains. Like they did use like the Juggernaut or Anti-Venom was, an, I think, in the Edge of Time. Or just other villains that you don't see very often. And again, like Alistair Smythe, that it is, it was appreciated at the time for at, at like even though those games weren't great the fact that they were willing to kind of stretch out their spider-man knowledge was noted and appreciated maybe uh, insomniac will do that too uh, when more sequels come out but for now that was like the big distracting element to me uh that was like okay i mean i'll, I'll still play it. i'll still have fun but i kind of wish you took a bigger risk as far as villains go so that was really the biggest con i have there other than that i am still really excited for this game probably ex more excited than i have been in a long time because i am such a huge spider-man fan i have been since i was a kid i i, I it was a, it was a whole subsection in my last editorial that i did about how much spider-man means to me so to see him come back in strong form in a really really good open exploration game that actually does what a spider-man exploration game could should do which is something that I think the previous studio kind of started to lose track of, which is like, yes, you want to feel experiment, it has to be stick to, it has, it has to stick to buildings. It has, you have to get that feeling of free fall when you jump off a building, because we've all done that in a Spider-Man game. And I love there's just a swan dive button. I love there's little touches like you can do like fucking flips and shit while you're web swinging through the city. Stuff like that's really fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Even the story itself is kind of mess. So... That's my opinion on Marvel Spider-Man PS4. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do not talk about the stupid costume thing. I don't care. Nobody else cares. Don't fucking talk about it. It's not worth my time. It's worth nobody's time. You get the costume you get. Fucking deal with it. So that's all I got to say on that. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next time on whatever show I make next. Take care.